proud privilege and honor to present before you uh, Mr. Sunil Mishra from CII. I come from an industry association, a body called the Confederation of Indian Industry. And uh, first of all, uh, to explain what uh, the industry associations are, we must try to <coughs> understand why there are industry associations, what is their role, what is the need of having an industry association. Anyone of you? Just whatever thoughts come to your mind. You must have heard about CII, FITI, SOHM, many other regional bodies, uh, APMA, or Society of Indian Automobile Manufacturers. Yes. Atul, please even to act as an interface between the government and the private sector. Mm -hmm. uh, that's the basic motto of uh, having a lucky education. Okay, very good. What else? Uh, to uh, give a collective voice of all the of all the industry people uh, and make a roadmap for where uh, the sector goes in future. Sure, excellent. Very nice. To have synergy between different players in the same industry uh, or different industries, so that they can they can be sync up between the needs of the, in one industry and that can be fulfilled by another. Okay. Very good. You have all the answers that. Yes, go ahead. So to facilitate uh, the, actually to represent the all the industries uh, in front of the government. Yeah, yeah. To facilitate the process of talking. Uh, right. Anybody else? Any other point? To set some specific guidelines for specific types of industry, a common growth, what is the common growth in that industry? So that it will be like a benchmark for the industries of that class. Mm -hmm. So to play the role of a regulator and set the boundaries to different players in the industry? Not really. Not regulator. Industry association starts getting the role of a regulator, it will break down. Because constituents won't accept it. Sir, to voice out the industrial needs and to Collective better voice. growth projects. I think more or less you are saying that. Not only uh, <coughs> like a bridge gap, bridging the gap between the policy makers and the private players, also making uh, like private players to play like to have a more uh, mature industry within themselves, also bringing the banks to private sectors so that they, they could be more lending and sure. the goals. So, I, I think you have more or less the uh, sense of what is the You see, the constitution of India gives the right and the powers to the citizens to form groups, to form associations. This is one of the rights you have of living in a democracy. So you can form groups, you can form associations. Associations are important because they are collective voice of that group. Association could be you can have a teacher's association maybe in a college. Or you might have a student union in a university. You might have a labor union. In a, in a factory. These are all associations. You will have a lawyer's association, which is called the bar. You will have a teacher's association, maybe Madhimek Shiksha, uh, Shikshak Sangh. Different interest groups coming together to form an association so that that association can voice their common needs. And a common need is better heard by those who need to hear it. So in, in industry, if, it, if a sole industry goes and tries to reach to, to the decision maker, it may not be heard uh, always. And it will be seen that that particular industry may have its own vested interest in promoting whatever it is trying to promote. But when there is an industry association, the association is expected to be voicing the the desire and aspirations of uh, its membership, collectively. And then the government, which usually forms the framework and the environment in which the industry operates, uh, listens to it. And then the industry association tries to influence the government policies, law, statutes, so that the environment in which it has to work 
is more conducive to growth and its own uh, prosperity. This is a complex thing in any industry association, in any body. When you sit, 20 people will sit, 20 of you will sit together to deliberate on anything. Many a times, achieving consensus is a huge problem. So in Indian industry also, <coughs> arriving at a consensus is sometimes a very, very uh, complex exercise. What may be good for ind one industry may not be good for the other. Supposing one industry says, okay, lower the picture tube import duty so that I can import picture tube and I am a TV manufacturer. The picture tube manufacturer will say, no, no, don't, don't reduce the duty because I will get killed. So there is a conflict of interest many a times. That conflict of interest is a part of uh, any industry body uh, which is complex. In our case, we, are, we have a system where there are committees and councils of industry. And then there is a very strong secretariat, a professional secretariat, which then, along with the senior office bearers, takes a larger view of what is good for for industry per se, what is good for the industry. Easier said than done. Sometimes it's extremely difficult. Sometimes we have to sort of uh, do a lot of acrobatics. Uh, in arriving at this consensus. So it, it happens from conflict. There will be conflict and then consensus. That resolution, these are things perhaps which you will experience when you get into it. Two main pillars within CI. There's a permanent secretariat which carries the work year after year. And then there are office bearers who are elected office bearers for one year. And these elections in my case happen at the state level and in the regional level we have four regions and then at the national level. So each state will have a chairman and a council of uh, state, a state council of CII. There will be a regional council of CII and a regional chairman, very powerful people. And then of course the national chairman and a national council which takes the broader uh, policy decisions as to what should be the CII stand on various issues. The national chairman is called the president. National chairman is called the president. This year, Adi Godrej is, yeah. is the president. And, uh, Sir, uh, if there is a president, uh, from a particular background of industry, so, um, considering that we take the decision for all the industries together, will there be a lot of uh, politics involved in uh, Usually not. Usually not because I give you an example of Adi Gotesh this year. He runs mostly FMCG companies. There is a council which is 120 people. These 120 people represent all the people. So, president alone will not take any decision. It is the council which will deliberate and then take it. And usually the decision is taken in a manner in which the groundwork and the spread work is done by the secretary of first. And they arrive at certain things which they present to the council with rationale, with data, and with logic. So most of the time, this, and this work is important, otherwise there will be chaos. So this type of activity happens, and then it goes to the council, and the council ratifies it. When we have made whatever president, and we have a very illustrious line of presidents in the past decades, one fundamental thing is that we ensure that if that person is going to be the president, we say that you will not run your industry for money. You have to be dedicated to the cause of industry for money. He doesn't see his industry at all. And later on, jokingly says that the industry has done, his business has done better because he was out of it. <laughs> Because it was not by people like you. So, uh, but it's, it's not that uh, any one of them would force themselves on something. He's so busy, like the president of CII in 365 days would be traveling overseas for at least 150 days or perhaps more on all the delegations going with the prime ministers and 
the commerce ministers and whatnot. He hardly has time, and that diary is written by us. For one year, his diary, his his office cannot write. So, and we have been lucky that we have had very balanced, very nice uh, human beings uh, who were leading.